Does it surprise you that I don't know where it is? doesn't matter anyway okay so you all done with your drawing are you ready So let's put a little bit of cerulean blue and let me just look here at, oh, okay. A little bit of cerulean and cobalt in the sky maybe. Well, we had riots here last night in Raleigh because of the um, thing that's going on in Minneapolis. And, you know, in the south here, we have a lot of history. And in the town of Fayetteville here, they have an old, it's an old market building. I've never even been to Fayetteville, but... Uh, they have an old market building that um, has some challenging history, and people were out to burn it down last night. I don't think they burned it down. I wasn't. I I just intentionally really didn't want to watch the news um, this morning, but um, they did damage it severely with fire. And uh, anyway, so it was interesting watching some of that last night as people went crazy fools okay so a little bit of blue sky save a few white spots for some clouds make the top of the sky a little bit darker than down below and drop in a little bit here and there I don't want a boring sky. I want a little bit of something happening here. And remember, I'm going to put that, the little pine thing there across. So maybe like that. Remember, it's going to dry a little lighter, so you can add a little bit more color here and there. I think I'm going to leave it white like that around it just for some contrast. We'll see how that looks. I think I'll pick up this blue around here. So Carly, did you get any fine wines yesterday? and let's see okay so the hills in the background I'm going to use a little bit of yellow ochre and a little bit of um, a, just very very light yellow ochre and then into that I'm going to mix a tiny bit of just a touch of um, like a, a red, cad red, like an orangey red, or any red really, but just a little yellow ochre like this in my palette, and then just a touch of red. And I'm going to put that on my hillside here in the back.
You might even add a little bit more. You can make it even a little bit more. Um, add a little more red to it if you want as you get down towards the bottom. And I'll probably go to about right there and maybe I'll make it sort of a jagged edge there because next is going to be that light the light um, lemony color with a tiny bit of green in it to suggest the top of those vines and some of that color you can even put up into the red uh, hillside area there just to make it incorporated into the background there a little bit. So I would use, um, you know, the bright yellow, just dot it in like this along the edge. And then just skip your brush along. You can save a few whites there if you want to. And I'm probably using mostly pigment to dot in here. Not mostly pigment, but I don't want a lot of water on my brush or it's just gonna explode and go everywhere. A little bit of exploding is okay, but <laughs> not a lot. Okay, and as we come forward then, we're gonna deepen up the green color. So just start mixing in a little bit more green and keep adding it to the bottom of this area. And the green you can mix up pretty much any green that you want that's um, you know kind of warmer in tone. You just want it to fade from the real light green up on the top of those vines to and I'm sort of using the point of my brush to drag it along skipping it here and there I'm kind of leaving a few little white spaces which I'll probably end up filling them in anyway but and then for a little more variety you can change the green up by either adding more a little yellow ochre to it right in here just a little bit here and there dotted in You want it to look kind of, you know, varied, like not just one big brush stroke of green color in there because the, the vines vary. And as you move down the page, just keep working it until you come to a little bit darker. You can add some ultramarine in. to darken it up as you get closer to the underneath side of the vines. And you can see I'm just, I've, I've got a darker color now on my brush and I'm coming across, dotting in here and there this color and when I get down to the this area where the vines um, are deep in shadow underneath I might even just plop those in and just keep going across the 
the page like that. Trying to do it all in one go like this is it, is, it can be a little challenging because <laughs> now in between I'm going to put the indication here of that kind of terracotta color uh, landscape and I'm going to plop that in very lightly into the foreground. I might save this, save this one area for this rose. Just put that in, and then go. Keep going back into your um, your green with thick pigment to get um, the the base of these vines nice and dark here because that's going to be like the focal point and I'm even going to add a little bit of purple to that and I'm using red red and green together or purple and green whatever to really make that dark And I'm just dancing the brush along to put in those, sh those dark shapes. And you can dot, dot, dot above to dot in some of that. Three nice bottles of cab. Woo! That sounds good. The lower edge of the... Um, of the vines. Do you see these dark shapes in here? That's what I'm getting at with the darks I'm adding. And then I've put in the the ground color along with that, so don't paint the stems yet or the shadows. Just work on getting some of this variety of color in the in the vineyard part. with your green. And I think so this rose doesn't look cut out. I might just take a little bit of my pinky red color here. and add a little bit of that to this area. Just a, an underpainting of it. Just dot in a couple. Don't do much. How's it going so far? I hope it's not too hard yet. I mean, I know this is a diff this is a challenging one because there's a lot going on in this. I have to blow up my screen to see. Oh, little Sam's here. Hi, little Sam. How are you? Are you painting watercolor with us today? I know you're an acrylic painter, but you could do this in acrylic too. Oh, okay. You just got home. How are things in Milwaukee? Was it bad there last night with rioting? We had rioting here in Raleigh. It's so silly.
Oh, you were in Green Bay. Okay. You know, it's funny. Um, <clears throat> oh, okay, you're visiting your dad. Oh, okay. In Durham, um, they had a protest that was perfectly peaceful. And then in downtown Raleigh, I think some, you know, we had some bad characters just looking for trouble. I mean, it was really, really stupid. And we have friends that own a restaurant down there, and their restaurant, the, they have glass doors, and they got broken. And it's just so senseless. Anyway, okay, so um, I'm just softening the edges on these these kind of rose sh flower shapes that I put in here just a little bit. Okay. So while that's drying, I think I'll go and work on the top a little bit on these the hillside in the back. And for that, you kind of need a um, a little bit of a, a gray value. I'm going to use <clears throat> some of this mixed up. No, that's a little too gray. Let's try to get it a little more, um, a little more purplish. So mix a red and a blue together. There, that's a pretty color. A little cobalt and a little red. And you can start dotting in uh, some of the hills on the hillside. I mean, some of the greenery back here on these California hills, right? A little cobalt, a little red, and you kind of get a, a violety color, and you can dot in some of the stuff along the the hills Not really following the photo exactly, but maybe here and there I put in a tiny bit of green just to tie it into the into that purple I've already got in there. I kind of like that little bit of purple color on my brush and I'm just dotting a, a little bit of it along this vineyard here to suggest some other texture and shapes. I left a lot of white spaces in here, which I may just take some of this yellow ochre green and knock some of those back a little bit. 
I don't know, they're kind of cool, but I don't think we need all of them that I have in here. Okay, so now in the foreground, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more. I think I should have had a little bit more color in there. So maybe I'll take my orangey red and dilute it, maybe with a little yellow ochre, and just get a, a nice... little mix and I'm going to put this color in here which is supposed to be like in between the just like that just drag it across mine was too light yours might be okay that's just going to be the my indication of my rose there the vineyard rose vines whatever you call it And then on top of that, I'll, I'll put my shadow in between. And the same mix you can use, just dilute it a little bit if you want, and you can kind of scumble in just by scraping that in to the hill in the background to give it a little more texture, the hillside. You can deepen it with a little bit of burnt umber if you want. And just use the side of your brush to scrape in a little bit of texture. Now I think I'll take my liner brush and work on my my pine needles up there. And for that, I'm going to just dip into this burnt sienna. And I could I could mix in a little bit of um you know, a tiny bit of cobalt just to change it up a little. That's going to darken it a little bit. I just want to kind of get a little bit of this pine needle thing. This is the kind of thing that you should do fast and loose. I can't get enough paint and water on my brush to get it <laughs> fast and loose right now. <laughs> Maybe I put a little ultramarine in there. All right, so here we go. This should be pretty, pretty thick now. It's a little darker than I want. Let's lighten that up a bit. And here's the pine needles coming off of there. Do you know what kind of tree this is, Irene or Kathleen? In the wine country? some kind of pine. 
with these sorts of needles. On the very end of your needle shapes, you can make just a couple dots, you know, to suggest the end of the, the thing. I think that always looks nice, you know, just because you want it to look light and you can always do that. Stop before you do too much. There we go. That's kind of a nice suggestion. I'm not sure I'll do any more to that. I might like to have one coming this way somehow. Maybe a little. I don't know. Yeah, maybe one more there. Okay, so I think I'll put the shadows in down here, and then I'll try to get in the rest of my, a little bit of um, greenery down here for the bottom of the, the painting. So these shadows will go in across the bottom of the vines, and then I'll put the posts in, and let's go ahead and get, we'll get this in uh, at the end, this area where the roses are coming along here. So what do you think would be a good shadow color under those trees? If you had to guess. I think the lavender color would be good. So I'm going to mix up some cobalt with a little bit of my rosy red color. And that'll give me a nice lavender color shadow to put under the trees. And I'll run that along maybe a little bit here and maybe here and maybe there. Where it's hitting these roses, I'll just blur it out with my finger, just wipe it a little bit, and maybe a little more shadow there. And then I better get my other green stuff in there at the foreground here of the painting. And I think a little bit more of that red. And then I'm just going to drop in. without a lot of, oops, I don't like that color. I'm gonna get some, without a lot of fussing around. I'll let that go right up into the shadow. Just a little bit of a suggestion of these roses. Kind of, you know, use a little calligraphy, calligraphic style there. And you can splash on some yellow, bright yellow in there, and maybe put a little bit over here. Just 
just to suggest a little bit of that greenery. And you can splatter a little bit. I want a little bit deeper value of the blue. So I'm adding some mm, ultramarine and a little bit of my uh, lemon yellow. You can pull up a few little odds and ends here to suggest the rose <laughs> bushes there. And then of course you can add more color to your rose. Um, it seems like the outer area here of this rose might have a little bit more color. Use the dot, 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 don't blend technique. Dot, 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 and don't, don't fuss with it. Just put it in kind of loose. Maybe there's a little bit back here. A rose or two. So as you go around your rose shape, you can just dot around like that. And remember, I'm going to add a little purple to this side to give it a little more oomph. Think of the stop sign shape as you're doing that and to give it a little bit more shadow on one side, add a little purple to it or a little blue since you already have the reddish color on there. I think this is a challenging painting. So <laughs> if you're having trouble with it, I wouldn't be surprised. Sam, you're back. Okay. So now I'm going to add my burnt sienna for these um, these posts, and they're going to really help the painting pop. It's going to give you something to focus on here in the foreground. And I may even, I don't know, just connect that. And then 
the ones that are further back. Put them in as well if I can. I need a little more water on my brush. You want pretty thick paint when you're when you're putting in the post because th that's a like a detail at the end. And for those details to make them stick, it has to be a, a creamier mixture of paint. Otherwise, you won't get the the dark color that you want. I may do a little indication of a fence there. And probably one of these posts should be, you know, the ones in the front should be a little larger than the ones behind. As long as you vary them, you know, in size and direction, so they don't look, they shouldn't all look perfect. <laughs> should be a little wonky. Maybe just a little bit of splatter, some purple splatter over the top of these vines. Just get a dark mix of a little bit of um, ultramarine and a lizard and crimson. Maybe lean it more to the blue side than the red side. So if I want to lean it more blue, you know, I really want a kind of a purpley color. You can see in my palette, hopefully, how dark that is and thick. And then you can hold a piece of paper over the top of your painting so that doesn't get totally splattered. But right in here in the vineyard, you can splatter some of that purple. Maybe I can dot dot of a little bit in there. And some of those dots can be larger up closer and then as you go back they're just tiny little splatters. Maybe I'll put a line or two where the shadow is stronger. coming off these posts maybe. Yeah, you don't really see it in the photo. You just see a really dark shadow this way across. I'm looking at the value of that hillside in the back and I think it, it needs to be a little darker. So I may just glaze over it with a little bit of this purple mix that I have on my palette. I'm going to water it down and just glaze right over the top of this whole thing. When you're glazing over you use a light touch and um, you don't want to really disturb what's underneath there. And in this case, you don't really even have to get every bit of it because some of those areas can remain light. Now 
Now I wish I would have done a fuzzy kind of a, um, maybe I'll just touch the edge of this. A little bit of a fuzzy background, hazy. So I'll just touch the edge of this and see if it'll soften it a little bit. It's a little stiff back there. I'm not very excited about that. And my rose here, I guess I'll add a final little bit of a lizard crimson. I think I might just splatter a little bit of Do I want to touch a green up here on my tree? Maybe a little just a, a touch here and there I kind of like that since it is a pine tree of some sort California pine tree. There we go. And you could add a little splatter to that if you want. Well, I think I'm going to take the tape off. <laughs> How did everybody do? That was a hard one. This could use a tiny bit more. Mm. Maybe a little bit more yellow ochre in here. Just to break up that vineyard even more. I'm just splattering a little bit of ye straight yellow ochre right on the top of it. it just looked a little bit there we go. Same thing down in here. Maybe a little amongst those roses. Kathleen, did you paint today or are you just watching? it up so you can see it. <laughs> My one big rose here, it's kind of funny. Uh, I could have maybe given it a little bit of indication of, you know, some other little rose shapes here. next to it the way it was so that it, d it doesn't appear to be just um, sitting out there all by itself. I guess they really went off the page, but it's okay.
You're painting and eating? Okay. It is lunchtime there in California. <laughs> I want to see how your paintings turn out. I know this is kind of a hard subject. And I don't know if I was on my own, I probably wouldn't paint it exactly like this. I would probably do it a lot more, try to do it a lot more um, a lot more atmospheric in the background and really try to play up this this vineyard area. You can see I'm messing with it now. Just putting in a few little dots back there along the vines. Okay, here come the pictures. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I see an empty plate. Somebody was eating. Oh, wow, Irene, look at your painting. That looks really good. It's a little blurry, but look. I love the way you did the, um, the foliage, you know, the pine on the top. And your shadows are great. I think it looks pretty good. <laughs> Amazing. And that's right in your sketchbook, I can see. Carly, you're, you drew with a pen and your, let me see. Here's her empty plate. Yep, she really was eating. There's her ribs. <laughs> and let's see Kathleen's vision here. Very nice. Ooh, I like the way you captured the vineyard, Kathleen, and your um, pine trees. Nice. And Carly, let's see yours. Oh, ooh, look at those roses. You did a good job on that. So you did, um, what did you say you did? Oh, you drew with a pen and your hillside exploded at the top. Okay. Oh yeah, it did. You have a nice little bloom there. That's cool though, because it looks like an oak tree way back there. Or something. Look at your roses, how good. I'm trying to get it. I'm sorry, I'm trying to get it so you can see it. I can zoom in there. There we go. And your pine uh, tree fringe there looks good too. Carly, if you want, you can take a damp brush and just take it along the top of your hillside and diffuse that dark line that's going across the top. And you can just let that disintegrate into the hill. I'm trying to see if I can suggest anything else. Um, yeah, you can just finish up your um, in the foreground where you have a few little roses there. Just put a little bit more greenery going. Uh, you know, just do a little calligraphy, like, um, here, I'll show you. And same thing on the right side of the rows, just to, like, you could even just extend that one shadow, the top shadow out across the back of that rose, or just add a little more, um, a little light green, yellow, yellow ochre. Just a little detail there. And um, let's 
see. Okay, so just take with your brushes and practice doing just some calligraphy like this, you know, where trees and green things may be growing up, you know, along a vine or whatever. And then into that, you can add a little bit of burnt sienna mixed with your green to darken it up here and there. You can cool it down with a little blue if you want to get a little darker. And then for your, um, you know, if you were suggesting some flowers on there or whatever, you could splatter a little bit. So this is what I'm talking about down in this area, in the, you know, in the bottom part of your painting, just doing a little bit of that kind of thing. You know, maybe some of your roses are along there. And you take that nice green mix. You may need it fairly thick to get a, a dark enough value along the edge. And always try to vary the color. as much as you can. And pay attention to how dark things are. Now here I'm adding more ultramarine to the bottom edge of that. But you can see how those little calligraphic lines can suggest vines and um, green, green stuff. Oops. I could add more calligraphy to mine here in the in the foreground if I wanted to. I notice too in a lot of these vineyard paintings, they'll have like a wild uh, a wild vine kind of, you know, one hanging out here kind of springing out of the top of the of the grapes growing like that. And so you can kind of scumble along with some calligraphy to do that, like I'm doing now, to give your painting some more texture and of course the feeling of those vines on the top. There you go. Let's just go ahead and do a, a couple of um, posts here to maybe indicate this vineyard. And then I'll do, again, a rough. Underneath those um, trees, it's really dark. So you've really got to get a strong value under there to, to give you that shape of <clears throat> a 
and the and the idea that it's beneath you know the the it's the underside of those vines and then as you go towards the top of course it gets lighter And then where the sun hits it, it gets pretty light, like that. Put a little bit more shadow in here. So if you wanted to paint it more expressively, which I certainly would want to. This is a little bit stiff for me, but it it gives you the idea of kind of, you know, the, the steps in in doing that. But you need, you need, I mean, for me, this is, this is stiff. I would much rather paint a lot more free like this. Um, so getting those those dark values in there underneath these grapes grape vines is will bring out that three-dimensional shape and then look what you can do you can even then go ahead and splatter a little bit on top like that I better check out the chat oh Paulina Thank you. The paint. This one's beautiful. <laughs> this one is not. It's just so stiff for me. It's too um, predictable, you know. I, it's not very. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles that I like. But um, you know, you can make it as expressive as you want. It just. This is just kind of a tight, tight study. Okay, let's see. Um, oh, I was going to find a, a frame, a mat to put on it. I think that always helps. To make it look finished. And um, I think this needs a pop of color. So I'm going to pull out my opera, <laughs> which is like this hot pink color. And I may add just a tiny bit of it on this rose. This, this color is really fugitive. Um, they don't recommend recommend it much. I mean, you want to keep it out of the sun, but look at the hot pink you can get with that. And um, let me show you. See, it's like a fluorescent pink almost. See that? But it's really a fun color to throw in um, on especially a painting like this that I'm not, you know, I'm not that happy with it. But um, that little pop of pink in there is, is kind of fun for those roses. It's <laughs> a little more. 
more pink on there. There we go. I really want to have fun with we'll splatter some of that around if I can. Ooh, there we go. Oops, I want to get my mat out of there. I'm just splattering a little bit of pink on there. Some more detail from those flowers popping up out of the foreground. <laughs> all right, that's it. That's all I'm going to do. Okay. Well, um, there they are side by side. And this was my study. Again, look at how much, I mean, I love the study, how much more watery and messy and loose it is versus this one, which is really tight. And that's why I don't like it. It's too, it's too tight. It needs to be loosened up like this. <laughs> so what I would do is, is go ahead and do this again and... Um, make it more expressive, like this one. One of my little flower studies. Well, I'm going to grab another little piece of paper here, and um, let's give another one a go, if you want to, or if you just want to watch. Um, I had a second image here, which I will pull up. Okay, so this one, with roses, let's get that one out of there. We'll pull this one up here. This one is another image that Judy sent me, and It's kind of one of those photos that it, it needs some work to make it work. Where did I put it? Here it is. So if you were looking at that and going, oh my God, how would I make a painting out of that? Because the proportions aren't really right for a painting. So my question on Instagram was, what would you do to make it work? And there's quite a few things you can do. You can crop it, you can move things around, and you can zoom in. So if you're ever looking at a photograph and you're thinking, oh, I want to paint that, um, <clears throat> figure out what it is you like about it, and then make a little thumbnail sketch to make it work. So... And this one, if I crop it down, see it's unbalanced because you've got this thing here and then a little short shadow which doesn't really connect to the other side of the painting. So it almost looks like it would look better as two different paintings. Like this could be one because that has much better proportion. And then you could zoom in as well on these, this distant vineyard, which is hard to see here. But maybe I can, let me bring this a little bigger. Back in the distance, there's rows back there. It's hard to see. Um, well, there we go. Okay, so the other thing you can do is... Um, let me get this a little smaller. Let 
you can turn it this way and you can simply move this larger tree over and bring the shadow across more if you want. So you could play with those little studies. I don't remember if I did one on this or not. I don't think I did. But that's where your little thumbnail sketches come in handy in your sketchbook. <clears throat> Most great paintings don't happen because you took a good photograph of something. Usually they happen because you edited it in some way to make it a great painting. Mm -hmm. Trying to find my... Where's my other sketchbook? Here we go. Oh. Okay. So I was doing some thumbnails the other day. And um, let's go ahead and try just a quick thumbnail with this image cropped down. So I've got to decide how do I want it. Um, I may want to even crop it smaller. Grab. And I actually didn't used to enjoy doing this, but I really do now because in one photograph you can find so many different things to focus in on and to paint. And look at that. That would work. Or you could move it over and just make it about the shadow and this... I would change the shape of that tree, but... Um, or you could zoom in to the, you know, the vines and push it up and make it about, you know, the clouds. So it's kind of fun to crop down and zoom in. I like this right here. Although these trees extend too far to the middle. Do you notice how they're... Um, you know, they put it, 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 it puts a T across here right in the center of your painting. You don't want that. You want to scoochie it over a little so that, you know, your sweet spot is in one of the thirds. So this would make a much better I like the idea of this thing coming across here too. Our pine again here and maybe even you could even make a tree coming up this way like a pine tree shape and going like that off the page. I think it would be cool. Hey Carly, okay great, we'll see you next time. <laughs> Just someone. DJ, this image? Anyway, I thought that was pretty cool. So let's just imagine our tree here. And I'm not even, I'm just gonna kind of sketch it in like that. And then have the vines coming across this way. Maybe like that. and a shadow across the front. And then back here, there'll be the hillside. And I can make, really make that anywhere I want it, but I think I like it like that with the vineyard here and maybe this hillside coming like that in the background. And then these trees 
they're really leaning right over the too far to the center of the painting. It should be over here more, like that. I think that's kind of cool. In this case, the rows are going like that. Might be kind of hard for you to see. Okay, let's just put some shape back here for these clouds, big fluffy white clouds. And let's put a little bit of green in here for this tree. We'll just do a tiny little thumbnail like that and foreground. I'm gonna have a pine tree shape here. Just get that in there any old way with a few leaves coming off like that and then your vines here and your background hill This is, um, I know it's hard to tell in the picture, but it's actually fall in this picture. And so the, these, <clears throat> these have um, orange colored. Shapes on these uh, vines which I think are kind of cool. And you could probably, uh, I'm gonna leave the tree dark green over here. And maybe put in a few more of those shapes there. And in the background, so, Anyway, my point is, is that when you're looking at a photograph and you want to make a painting, play around with it to get an idea for your composition and what you're trying to say. Is it a sunny fall day? Is it foggy? Is it rainy? You can really make it any way you want. This need this to pop out here a little bit. Maybe it'll go right off the page, I guess, at that point. And then there's um, a hillside back here and a few little fields. Darken that up. And then the shadows coming up. And then this big shadow coming across here. Like that.
so I think doing these thumbnails is kind of fun and um, you can really enjoy doing them because they're not finished paintings and they, they're a lot looser so there you go kiddos and then I can put my Um, my pine tree, my expressive pine tree shapes here. Just a little calligraphy in there. So that's a nice first wash, and then you can go in and make it a lot more detail and to bring out a second layer of wash colors. There you go. Ooh, I really splattered that a lot. It's a little bit more of that fall foliage kind of feel there. There you go. And this tree in the background was quite dark. I don't know if I want to give that a, a boost back there of a little bit. Well, Irene and Kathleen, if you're still on, I want to know if you ever started watching um, the show. The um, uh, Money Heist. <laughs> you just found my channel? Oh, let me see, let me see. <laughs> Laura, well, thank you. I'm leaning in because it's hard for me to read the chat. I have it so small on my computer. Let me blow it up. But thank you for joining us. Yeah. We do watercolor on Sunday afternoons at 3 o'clock. So at this time every week. And um, we've just been playing around with some vineyard studies. And I wasn't too happy with the first one I that I demonstrated, so I'm just going back in and doing um, some more studies, little studies. So. <laughs> Is that 100 bits? That's so cute. Thank you. I see I have some people on Twitch and some people on YouTube, so... Let me see. I'm trying to see the name. I have to blow this up a little bit bigger so I can see it. Let me just, I'm messing around with my, oh, there we go. Oh, Laura Hale. You're not uh, any relation to Rosie, are you? <laughs> what time zone am I in? I'm in um, Eastern. So, um, uh, 3 o'clock Eastern Time. It's Eastern Daylight Time right now, otherwise it's Eastern Standard Time, yeah. And if you want, just hit the subscribe on um, YouTube and then you'll be notified when I go live so that you'll have it. 
And there's a whole bunch of other videos on there from all the past Sundays. And I don't edit them, so it's whatever it is. So you can just zoom ahead, um, you know, to the best, the best parts. <laughs> now I have a friend named Rosie Hale. That's why I'm asking. And she's out on the West Coast, so that's why... Um, That name is familiar to me. So there's a little thumbnail. Um, from this sketch that's on there. So whenever you have a photograph, just make it suit, you know, if there's one part that you really like, which is the fall foliage, then make that your focal point and design your painting around that. And let's see. Um, if I think, do we want to try to paint that larger or should we do another little study? DJ, what would you like to do? DJ is following us. He's in India. I have. Um, regulars from California, Palm Desert, that are tuning in. I don't know if they're still here, but... And um, we've got someone in San Francisco and someone in Milwaukee. <laughs> You're not related to Rosie, okay. Yeah. Yeah, three. So, are you a painter, Laura? An artist? Well, welcome. You're welcome to join us anytime. Okay, now, what I could do is, um, oh, we could just turn this around and do this this way to crop it in another direction and do a tall painting that way. Um, let me see if I have another photograph. Ooh, this one was nice, too. I think this is the same area. It's just a different view. You're trying to learn watercolor. Well, welcome. A lot of people on my stream are trying to learn watercolor, so it's good. <laughs> Just someone's name is DJ. I didn't know his name for a long time, but um, I used to call him, he used to log on with a different name, and so he was always called um, Tom Was Innocent. So I used to call him Tom for a long time. <laughs> it's kind of a joke. <laughs> All right. So um, this is the t part of my stream where I, get, where I take a break, and I and usually... Um, Joe will bring me a spritzer, so I'm going to ask him for my spritzer, and then I'm going to paint one more of these little um, scenes, I think, as a, a little sketch to get us going. Here's another beautiful one. This one's really pretty. Maybe we'll do part of this. So I'll let you guys look at this image for just a second, and I will be right back <laughs> you got this <laughs> Joey D
Joe says it's hot out. I wonder what the temperature is. I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina, by the way, Laura. <laughs> so I've been trying to paint in watercolor for many years. Sometimes I have good success and sometimes I don't. It's I think every artist is frustrated that way with their painting. So Oh, uh, yeah, it's been a long stream already. DJ, thanks for hanging out with us. I hope your painting went better than mine did. And um, my first one, Laura, I should bring that over to show you. But um, DJ, yeah, if you, um, if you attempted to paint it, let me know. I'd like to see it. I need to put this somewhere. So we were working on vines, the vineyard. Okay, Irene, and Kathleen, nice to see you guys. We'll see you next week. And um, Paulina, you're probably, I know it's late. Paulina is in um, Poland, so it's bedtime for her, past her bedtime probably. And this is the one we did earlier, which I wasn't too happy with, so. Let's move this photograph back over here. And Oh, your oldest son is in Greenville? Are you in Utah? Oh, your daughter-in-law. Oh, is from India. Oh, nice. She and my youngest son are in Utah. Okay. Greenville, North Carolina. That's where my son is going to college at ECU. He's home right now taking summer classes, of course, because they're all home, you know. But, and Laura, where are you? Are you in North Carolina too? Oh, that's where your son works at ECU? <laughs> so Laura is your relative. DJ's in India. Where is your um, daughter-in-law from in India? I keep moving the chat around so I can see it better. Oh, you're in Missouri. Okay. Well, Irene, one of our painters, has a daughter who lives in Missouri. And what does your son do at ECU? <laughs> Is he a teacher? Oh, and oh, Irene, yeah, Irene's daughter is in Paulsville, Missouri. Oh, you're in Missouri too, Laura. Okay. Oh, genetic research. Okay. So he's probably like in the medical end of campus, the medical buildings down there. Yeah. Yeah, they have a medical school and a dental school. Or a nursing school. For, yeah, all three. Southern India. She'd have to look it up. Well, isn't that... Interesting. Well, you're going to fit into this group pretty well. <laughs> That's great. That's good to hear. I wonder how you found me today on YouTube. 
Sometimes I get people from Twitch too. I've got someone new here from Twitch today also. NA1324. I don't know if they're still there. Oh, his office is next to the medical center. Okay. Nice. All right. Well, Chris is studying um, computer science. He'll be a sophomore next year there. All right. So... Um, and if you want to contact me too, Laura, I can, um, share with you, um, if you go to my website, Carolyn, did I, no, I, oh, I don't know if you sent it or not, DJ. Um, oh, Sarah mentioned, oh, she did. She's so sweet. In a YouTube video? No kidding. Really? Wow, I'll have to check that out. Yes, yeah, Sarah, um, I met a year ago when I first started doing streaming on Twitch. And um, she's just amazing. She's just, she can do so many things. So I'm sure if you follow her stream. But um, last week, she jumped in to my stream. Um, and we got talking. Oh, so you looked me up. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, thanks for doing that. Yeah, I keep telling her I'm trying to increase my... Um, uh, I wanted to get to 100 subscribers on YouTube so I can change my, um, my login. <clears throat> Let me see, DJ. And I'm up to 71 subscribers now. And it's only been what, like a month or something that I started doing this? So, um, that's, it's good. It hasn't exploded, but it's better than nothing. Let's see. Um, I'm looking for, oh, let's see. Wait. Oh, look at DJ's painting. Oh, DJ, that's very sweet. Look it. How sweet is that? I love your calligraphy on your um, on your pine bow, pine branch, and how sweet the little um, it looks like a little fence. If you connected it, then it would look like um, to the bottom of those grape vines then it would look more like a vineyard um but it looks like a little fun but either way it's fine and then i love the sweet way you did the flowers that's a really sweet little painting if you put a couple little tiny birds in the sky and then if you dot it in a little bit of um just a sprinkle a little bit of um splatter to suggest some texture going back into the distance in those vines. It would be really, yeah, it's really sweet, DJ. That's perfect for your greeting card series. I like it. DJ started following me in my Twitch stream. Um, gosh, I don't know how long it's been, DJ, but um, <laughs> he stuck with me all this time and he finally got some some new watercolor paints and so um he's really doing a good job yeah and then he did i'll show you um laura he did um let's see he did this one this week too which is another study from 
uh, kind of a demo I was doing on the on the seascape. So, yeah. Well, I'll have to check out Sarah's latest video. I didn't know she did that. That's very sweet of her. So, and um, Laura, if you want, you can follow me on YouTube. I mean, on um, Instagram. Uh, it's under the same name, Carolyn Zabavatel. And I'll usually send out um, a reminder like this. So this is one of the little studies that I did. I don't know when I did that one. In my sketchbook. So. <laughs> it's great to be related to a wonderful artist, DJ. <laughs> Oh, you guys are cute. You guys are so cute. Okay, well, um, all right, so one more little study on this, I think on this sketch here, on this uh, photograph. Now, like I say, with when you're working from photographs, Sorry, let me get this. Let me get this up of here. Zoom in and crop down to figure out, because you probably don't want to paint the whole thing. And typically, a photograph isn't always set up exactly perfect for your artwork. So you can, ooh, look at that. How beautiful is that? And in this one, it would be all about these, um, you know, the way the vines are held up with the stakes and then the beautiful deep blue in the background. I love that. I'm not sure how I would do it exactly as a painting, but that's why we have our little sketchbook. And then could also do it a larger painting this way, or we could crop it much smaller. I can find my other. There it is. And find our subject this way. So look at that. Instant subject. And then it becomes about, you know, these beautiful golden hills in the background and the lit up leaves here in the in the on the vines and I love the silhouette of this tree back here which maybe I can move that over a little and that becomes a nice composition too and if we wanted to go this way we'd get another one this reminds me of the parasol pines in Italy and I love this, you know, kind of this roadway running through the back, kind of leading your eye up to the pines. You could make the foreground all fuzzy and kind of make that part of your leading your eye into the background of the painting. Or you could crop it more like this. Let's see if I can get and you could make it all about these just off center that's pretty too there's so many options and just the top of the vines not you know cutting out the bottom portion ooh all right <laughs> since Laura is new so I can tell her that I teach to draw bat <laughs> DJ's a teacher. DJ, what do you teach? Math, engineering? Uh, she, he, he drew in his, he thought his birds were a little big, so he calls them bats. He's not going to teach you how to draw bats, but um, there's his, his birds in his painting. We had a bat fly into our house a few weeks ago. And it wasn't even that late in the evening. It was like 
five o'clock in the afternoon and a bat flew in. Joe thankfully got it out, but that was not good. This is kind of pretty. It almost reminds me of Tuscany, the Tuscan Hills with the parasol pines in the background. So maybe I just do a quick little study of that right here. And do I have a bigger, a bigger paint? Yeah, why don't we do it uh, this way? And We'll do this really quick, Laura. Since you're new, it's towards the end of my stream, but I'm excited for you. And I kind of like the way this thing has a, almost a, you know, and then the mountain range behind it. Try to do it so you can see it here. And then these pine trees, parasol pines, kind of go like that. And we want that wandering road to kind of, maybe it, hmm, well, it's sort of on the edge. I don't know if we really need it. It might be a distraction, but we'll put it here. And then... I'll just taper that off. I don't want that quite so. Okay, they're in the distance, but it's it's all about these this vineyard here in front with these grape leaves going from light to dark and then trying to make up some interesting shapes <clears throat> maybe these are over on this this way a little more and then over here just rolling some bushes on this side and they go off the page there so Laura, last fall I went to um, Italy, to Tuscany. I studied Italian in college, so for me it was a sweet trip because I got to practice my Italian. And um, we went on a about a 10-day painting trip. And I just love seeing those parasol pines again because I hadn't, I hadn't been to Italy in well, in a few years, um, and so it was really nice, just get a nice little hillside there, and then these are the grapes, so, and let's put a couple birds in there. Okay, let's just do a quick little Study. <laughs> that was your bat. Which one? I think I'm losing. I could have kept what, DJ? Okay, we're just going to put in a little bit of a cerulean blue sky. So, anyway, Laura, I was saying if you go to my website, um, if you just put my name on carolynzabavatel.com, then um, you can send me uh, an email, and I'll send you my what I use for my painting, my supply list, whatever. And um, then you'll know exactly what's in my palette. And I can tell you quickly, too, if you want to know my palette colors, but I can send you a list of what I use, which might be more helpful. 
I really like this cobalt blue back here on this this mountain so let's just go for it and make it crazy because you know when I first started this Sunday stream I called it sketchbook Sunday to keep it light and fun and you know tutorial but not necessarily like explaining every little thing but um keeping it like a sketchbook you know which everybody should do especially as um you know as a um someone new to watercolor these trees i just want them silhouetted back there and then coming down to this lighter color here in the foreground. And maybe a little more red in there. Let's really jazz up the colors. If we're going to mess around with it, let's, let's be bold. And really now let's see um, a little bit of this gold over here I'm not really paying attention to the chat right now while I'm painting this part of it but okay there we go and then I'll get into these lighter colors here where the foreground gets kind of lit up with these vines and just let the water flow don't don't worry about it and as you go deeper into it they get darker down into here and then you can really go crazy with your color and um, you can be really expressive I like adding this burnt sienna in here with the greens and blues to help um, you know it's showing that the bottom part of those vines as they get down towards the foreground of this painting Okay. Oh, the bat that went into my home. Oh, that's that you gift to me. <laughs> yes, you sent it all the way from India. Oh my god. I could have kept it. Yeah. That's what I need, DJ. I need a nice lovely bat right there. Right there. Into this wet mix, it's fun to splatter things in to give you some texture. So I'm splattering in yellow ochre to suggest the sunlight on these vines. There we go. And I think at this point I would let that dry and then I'd go back in and um, I would give these trees another little under shadow here to make them pop out of the distance. Back there. And then we had um, some blue shadows, blue purpley trees over in this corner a little bit. You want to make that look different than the other area, obviously. 
so it doesn't. DJ, I thought you were going to go to bed. You're up very late tonight, so there we go. And then we need something different over here, so I think I'll put these trees on this side here. So just a little bit of a tree there. And then I'll drop some more of this dark purpley stuff into the foreground down here. And maybe I'll give that road a little definition there. And maybe back there just a little bit of some detail. The funny thing is that there's actually a little bit of detail here in the field. So there we go. What do you think, Laura? <laughs> All that from this photo. So um, it's a good idea to do your sketch, you know, in your sketchbook, be free to, to um, experiment with different ideas. You love it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot, you know, I don't like painting by number kind of painting. I, it just doesn't appeal to me in any way. Um, I, I'm really only interested in the artist expressing, you know, with, as a painter who really paints. And so, um, Oh, all your favorite colors. Wash hands. I know, my hands are a mess. No, I, li I like blues a lot. Blues and um, pinks and purples and, you know. Um, but, yeah, I have, I have a problem, a little problem with color. I use it probably more than I should. And um, you really want to try to mix neutral colors and then have pops of um, bright colors in your paintings. But I'm guilty of using more color than I should usually. But you can see on my website. It was supposed to be clapping. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's okay. All right. Um, I feel like this could have a, this blue here is not really represented anywhere else in the painting, but what, what I could do is take that cerulean blue and just splatter a little bit right there. And then it would tie it together. I know it's kind of hard for you to see that, but. Well, I'm glad Sarah sent you over here. Um, she is, she is such a diligent hard worker and she's so talented I mean she has so much experience with her photography videography digital drawing um, she does her fantasy drawings she's paints in oil and acrylic and gouache and I mean I don't know when she sleeps <laughs> but <laughs> Anyway, well, um, so yeah, my cousin who lives in California sent me all these photographs of um, the vineyards in, uh, in and around Sonoma and Napa. So that's what we've been working from. So I'm just going to put Sonoma on here. There we go. And she has a kind heart. Oh, she does. She's just a sweetheart. Yeah. 
And we have someone on Twitch, but I can't figure out who um, the Twitch is. Um, NA1324, whoever you are, NA1324, welcome to our group, our painting group. I see you on my Twitch chat. I have, I'm streaming on Twitch and YouTube at the same time, so um, uh, I guess that you're, I see your chat on the Twitch stream, but I don't know if I see you on the other, on my other um, chat screen on my computer. I have both up right now. So, welcome. And do I call you NA1324 or do we have a different name you want me to call you? Oh, you need to figure out Twitch, Laura? Um, well, Twitch is an app that you load. I think it's an app. You just load it on your computer and then you just sign up, it's free, but you make your own account and um, just go to twitchtv.com Yeah, I didn't know what Twitch was a year ago either, uh, but someone invited me to her marketing group on Pinterest and I don't really use Pinterest but um, not Pinterest I'm sorry on Etsy her Etsy marketing group and um, I don't I have an Etsy shop but I don't really pay any attention to it and I rarely upload anything and I just I'm just not into Etsy that much for selling stuff but um, uh, she invited me to her Etsy marketing group and then she told me that she streams on Twitch and I'm like, Twitch, what's, what, what? And then she got me into it. So, anyway, that's what I've been doing. All right, well, I'm going to sign off, guys. It was nice hanging with everybody. And <laughs> NA on Twitch, maybe we'll see you next week, Sunday, same time. Three o'clock. Oh, you found me on Instagram. Okay, Laura, good. Well, let's um, let's connect there. And if you want to message me your email address, I will email you my um, my color palette that I use and some of the supplies that I use if you want, so that you can paint with us on Sundays. <laughs> I don't guarantee. <laughs> My paintings are going to turn out, but um, we can have some fun anyway. All right, DJ, so nice of you to be here again, and congratulations on your painting. I think it turned out, it's really sweet. Laura, maybe we'll see you next time. See y'all later. Have a good night, everybody. Goodbye, NA1324. <laughs> we'll see you later. Okay.